So I'm Lauren Rosen, um, and I direct the UWU System Collaborative Language Program. Um, so my focus is languages, but I've been doing technology integration into all disciplines, essentially, for over 20 years. Um, and so basically, I look to solve problems. And I'm going to kind of mess up all of what John just told you um, in that this is going to be sort of a hands-on throughout. Um, what I'm going to be talking about is an evolution that we've had in technology. And a lot of it is really picking the right tool for the right task. So I believe that we all want to get our students um, connected to our disciplines and talking about the things that are important to them and connecting that to what they're knowing and understanding. And I was looking for ways to make that happen, especially in language classes where we're all about communication. Um, the more that we can get them talking, the more they're practicing language. But in really any discipline, that conversation is where they really make those connections. So that was our um, goal. And whoops, where did it just go? There we go. So, um, and just by the way, I was here, was it two weeks ago that we did Sway or a week ago? Week. Last week. Last week we did Sway, and so I was playing with it, and that's what I made my presentation in. Um, for this part, uh, just to play with it. Um, so I want, we wanted to get students talking. And here's kind of the, the challenges that we had, um, problems that we wanted to solve, um, to get to the task that students, um, where they were practicing and creating in the language. Um, and one of the problems we always have is that class hours are too short. So if you're spending a lot of time with your lecture piece, you never get to the fun interactive activities where they're making those connections. So we wanted to make sure that there was time to do that. So we started thinking about how can we get enough information from them ahead of time so that that conversation can be more fluid when it happens. Um, and again, as I mentioned, connecting to the content. And our textbook content is old in some senses, particularly in languages. Who know, uh, you know, depending on your department and what the cycle is, you may have the same textbook for many, many years and the pictures are old, the conversations are old, the culture pieces are maybe a little dated even because um, everything is changing. Why does this, oh, you know what? It's doing that because I'm not plugged in. So give me just one <laughs> second and I will put my power on and then that won't keep uh, fading away. So ultimately, what I wanted was um, the students talking and creating in the language, applying the new vocabulary and structures in the case of language learning, um, engaging with the content, and making those personal connections. Um, so <clears throat> what I tried was chain drills. What a chain drill is is you maybe ask a question of a student, the student responds, then it's their job to choose another student and kind of build a chain that way to get them all talking. But again, it's these short bits. Um, having them talk in pairs with their elbow partner um, and also giving out conversation prompts. So you get them in pairs or groups and you hand them like a card or something with what you want them to talk about. And all of that kind of works. I mean, we've been doing that for years and there's nothing wrong with continuing to do that to some extent. But I wasn't really getting to the part where they can create using what they're connected to. And I really wanted them connecting more and not just using the vocabulary from the textbook or whatever. So um, what I want you all to do is we're gonna sort of test this out and you'll see how this evolved for me. On your active learning sheets, there's a, a bit.ly link to this website. It's, uh, let me look at your sheet for a minute. That's right up, right? Um, yeah, the bit.ly slash ATL dash Padlet. If you, go to, if you go to that, you'll get to this website. <coughs> and we're actually going to do some of these activities. Um, you can do it from your phone if you like. It may ask you to download the app, but you can do it from the website if you want. Um, what I'd like you to do <coughs> once you get to this page, and I'll walk around to see if you're there, is there's this Padlet here. And we, I want to find out who you are. So add an image or a sentence that tells us something about who you are. Consider what your core beliefs are. You can also add an image. So to do that, for example, I can click here. 
I'm going to give mine the title education because one of my core beliefs is that everyone has a right to being educated. And I'm going to, um, for speed, I'm going to upload a photo from my computer. And I'm going to say, um, see what I have that might be a photo. Actually, I'm going <coughs> to change that to collaboration because I know I've got one in there for that. But you can find one on the web, and I'll show you in a second where I've got links to um, resources that, all right, this is going to take too long. I'm just going to go to one of those. Link from the web. So if I want to get a photo from the web, I can go to one of these files down here. These are all copyright free photos. So if I go over to more file, I'll find something that matches education. If I do a search for education, I'll pick a photo. This, let's see. Um, what photo do I like? How about this one? And I should be able to download this or get the link. I'll go ahead and download it. And then I'll have a file that's education. <clears throat> okay, so there's my there's my education photo that I'm gonna use. Let me go back to my web page here, and I'm going to add an image by uploading it. Go to the desktop, there's my education photo, and it's loading. It's a little slow. The idea was that students could do this before they come to class. Um, and I'll write, everyone has a right to an education. So there's my core value. Right? So if you all want to take a minute to add yours to this Padlet, all you have to do is click the plus button and go ahead and add something to this. I'm going to walk around and make sure everybody's made it to this page at least. Um, and if you don't have images like I showed you, you can go down to the bottom and you can find one. Everybody's pretty much there. Um, Padlet does have an app. It's free. As you can see, you don't have to log in to do it. Typically, when I do these with students, um, I ask them all to do it, but I'm not taking attendance with it. I'm not giving them a grade for having done it. I'm just trying to get information from them so that when they come to class, we have something to talk about that they're connected to. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reload and see what's up there. And we've got a few of them in there. Okay. Um, what I'd like you to do is take about 30 seconds or so, talk to your elbow partner about a core value that's up here, the one that you posted, preferably, um, because that's the one you're closest to, that's the one you're going to have the most to talk about. So go ahead and take 30 seconds and talk to your elbow partner about your core value. I can't let you know my compared to It's slow. It's not. Yeah, it's just going to be slow. Well, that's, yeah, that's the students at home. I have time. Not at the exact same time, right. Yeah. I work on the phone. So, did it ask you to Okay, so if you scroll down further on the website, I have some at the very bottom that have free, copyright free images that you can use. Okay. 
I'm going to stop you just because we don't have a whole lot of time here. <laughs> Normally that could go on forever, but as you, you probably notice that if you're talking about something that you're close to, it's a whole lot easier to talk about it than when your teacher gives you something and say, okay, you're going to talk about this, right? So that was kind of where I was headed. Um, but sometimes you need to organize that a little bit more um, because you can't, maybe you don't want to have just pairs and everybody talking about something different. Maybe there's something specific or more specific that you want them to talk about. Maybe you had them do a reading or they watched a video and you wanted them to pull what they got out of that video and there were some very specific things that you were hoping that they would get. So what I'm going to do now, this is part of the evolution, right? So that was Padlet. We went to um, something called Tricider. Um, <clears throat> and what Tricider does is it allows people to add their ideas and to vote on them, OK? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show a very short TED Talk, OK? And I want you to, to listen to the TED Talk and you're, I'm going to give you a, a tricider um, space where you'll be able to add your ideas. I'll open up tricider right now just to show you what it's going to look like. Um, whoops, wait a minute. Let me back up to the actual tricider ideas <laughs> link. <laughs> Sorry. Because I've already created a tricider. Yeah. So, out of curiosity, for the tablet tricider, are these tools that you're bringing into your own website? or? Are these tools being used on their website? So I, get, I would give the students the links to them or embed them in my course page, depending on okay. whether your course page allows you to do that, because um, different people are using different things, and I haven't tried it in all of them. Um, <coughs> and then they have easy access to it. Notice they do not have to log in. So there's no personal information like that being passed. Um, you don't have to worry about FERPA and all that jazz. Um, and like I said, I'm not taking attendance with it. So I'm going to have you listen to this video, um, and then I'm going to have you add a comment to this tricider. Understanding how others see the world gives us the opportunity to expand our view. Okay, that's kind of to frame what the video is that you're going to watch. Um, with that in mind, what is the biggest takeaway from Siver's talk, or Siever's talk, I think you pronounce this is last name, Siever's. How does this impact approaches you take with your students what techniques do you use to reach a diverse student population? And what techniques do you use to get students to recognize perspectives outside of their own? So I'm going to have you add just briefly your ideas about kind of the world culture. Now to get to this tricider, if you want to be looking at those questions, just underneath the video, you can click on tricider ideas. And you can look at those questions. And I'm going to um, go ahead and play this video. I'll make it big for you first. Uh oh, wait. Let me pause it because I don't have audio hooked up. I forgot to plug in the little audio here. Um, let me back this up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play this video. It's only three minutes. Imagine you're standing on a street anywhere in America, and a Japanese man comes up to you and says, uh, excuse me, what is the name of this block? And you say, I'm sorry, well, this is Oak Street, that's Elm Street, this is 26, that's 27th. He says, okay, but what is the name of that block? You say, well, blocks don't have names. Streets have names. Blocks are just the unnamed spaces in between streets. He leaves a little confused and disappointed. So now imagine you're standing on a street anywhere in Japan. You turn to a person next to you and say, excuse me, uh, what is the name of this street? And they say, oh, well, that's block 17, and this is block 16. And you say, OK, but what is the name of this street? And they say, well, streets don't have names. Blocks have names. Just look at Google Maps here. There's block 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. All of these blocks have names, and the streets are just the unnamed spaces in between the blocks. And you say, OK, then." How do you know your home address? I said, well, easy. This is District 8. There's Block 17, House Number 1. They say, OK, but walking around the neighborhood, I noticed that the house numbers don't go in order. I said, of course they do. They go in the order in which they were built. The first house ever built on a block is House Number 1. The second house ever built is House Number 2. Third is House Number 3. It's easy. It's obvious. 
So I love that sometimes we need to go to the opposite side of the world to realize assumptions we didn't even know we had and realize that the opposite of them may also be true. So for example, there are doctors in China who believe that it's their job to keep you healthy. So any month you are healthy, you pay them. And when you're sick, you don't have to pay them because they failed at their job. They get rich when you're healthy, not sick. In, <laughs> in most music, we think of the one as the downbeat, the beginning of the musical phrase. One, two, three, four. But in West African music, the one is thought of as the end of the phrase, like the period at the end of a sentence. So you can hear it not just in the phrasing, but the way they count off their music. Two, three, four, one. And this map is also accurate. <laughs> There's a saying that whatever true thing you can say about India, the opposite is also true. So let's never forget, whether at TED or anywhere else, that whatever brilliant ideas you have or hear, that the opposite may also be true. Domo arigato gozaimasu ta. Okay. Um, and somewhere around 30 years ago, I had um, a map like that that was upside down in my classroom when I was teaching. Um, it was junior high at the time, it wasn't middle school yet, um, as I date myself. And uh, I had students who would come in and say, your map's upside down. I'm like, no, actually it's not. <laughs> so when I saw this TED talk, I was like, oh. <laughs> so anyway, I want you to take a minute, go ahead and click on that link just underneath the video to try Cider Ideas if you haven't been there yet. Um, and see if you can put some thought into one or two of those questions and just click Add Idea and then type in what you're thinking. When you're done typing in what you're thinking, you may need to refresh to see everybody's ideas. Okay. So a couple of things that TriSire added that Padlet didn't do was you can add an argument. So you can, and you can feel free to do this now, read each other's and see if you have some kind of a comment that you would like to add to what they've said. But most importantly, what I'd like you to do is read each other. So go ahead and reload to make sure you've got them all there and vote. Vote on what you think, vote on at least two so, you keep, so you're not just voting for yours, right? possibly three, that you think are really key, that you really you know, connect to from this. So go ahead and, and start voting on which ones you like or agree with or think would be good points of discussion, for example.
like the idea. Right. It means that you like the idea. So what I do is I would have my students doing this the night before and voting on at least three. Now, can it be anonymous? Um, yeah, I think it can. Oh, you do need to put it in name. Okay. But if it... You can... You, yeah, right. I was just going to say, you could be Snoopy. You know, you could be whoever you want to be. Because again, this is not one of those things where I'm taking attendance. I'm going to tell you in a minute what I do with this. So go ahead and, and please vote. doesn't matter who you are. You can be... A so one other question with the argument. I noticed that in order to post that, that could be truly anonymous, no name. But you need to vote if it's a positive or negative comment in relation to it. Is there any way of saying like neutral, like it's a question being asked? I don't know that there is. Okay. Um, but yeah. what's going to happen um, in terms of is, I guess, supporting this statement or against um, the students with the Right, negative right. Statements. But there, I don't think that there's a neutral. But I think that that's, for at least my purposes, okay, because it just kind of, what I'm looking for are what are my students thinking. Okay. Um, and then I'm bringing this into class the next day. So these are the kinds of things that they do at home ahead of time. Um, and I worry less about that because as I said at the beginning, the whole point is for discussion topics. So what this does is it tells me what my students are thinking, kind of where their head is. And rather than handing them out specific prompts, what I will do is I will take like the three to four most voted on items and I make those the prompt cards. So now they're talking about the framework of the video or whatever it is that I had them read, read, but the prompts are what they came up with. So again, their discussion is more full because it's what they came up with. Um, based on, you know, and it also helps me know where they're thinking so I can help guide that to the specific points or perspectives or whatever it is that I'm looking for them to have. But by them choosing what they're talking about, they're much more connected to it than when I said, okay, you watch that video, here's what you're gonna talk about. So that's where I was going with it. Um, and yeah, like I, like I said, I, I'm not looking to see who did or didn't do it. I just need something that will get them talking. And typically, the student who doesn't do it, they're still connected to, more connected to these ideas that their classmates came up with than the ones that I came up with. And I'm not telling them ahead of time, oh, and by the way, you're not getting a grade for this. That, you know, that wasn't really the point. I don't, I don't tell them that. It's just like one of those things. And then when they realize that I'm pulling their topics, they get more engaged. You do this one time and they don't really know where it's going, but after you've done it once, they get more engaged because they realize what you're doing with it. So I really liked this. Um, because it gave me a little bit more information about where that they were as a whole. Um, but what it didn't do at the time, though now you can add an image to this, originally you couldn't. Um, so I had moved on to a newer one, and that is called dot storming. Okay? <laughs> so if you go back to your website, what dot storming does is combine the two. You can do an image and you can do voting. Okay? And again, I, I don't really care what this, you know, who's actually participating or not, but I'm taking this as my point of, of conversation. Um, if you go to the, just below the thing that's embedded, you'll get the full view, which I think is easier to work from than the embedded version. Um, so now what I'd like you to do is add an image or a video, which Tricider I don't believe will do videos. But this, if you put in the URL, it'll bring up the video like YouTube. Um, put in an image or video that represents a formative moment in your life and a statement that helps identify that change. A formative moment is drastic enough to change how you see things through your lifetime. Okay, so think about something that happened to you or something that you did in your lifetime that was a formative moment and put an image up there. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. I'm going to put one up too for me. Um, so to do that, I go to click Add an Image, and I can select images. And 
Again, if you don't have an image in your head, you can go down to the bottom of the page here. I have um, several different places where you can find images. This time I'll just go to freeimages.com as an option and I'm going to search for Outhouse and I'm going to add that. I know that sounds really weird. Um, small version of it. Oh, this one's making you create an account. Okay, I haven't used this one so much. Um, let me go to one that I don't have to create an account to find an image. This one also um, seems to be posting things as they're written or put up there rather than having to reload, but typically that hasn't mattered a lot in my case because I'm not having them do it in class. I'm having them do it outside of class as preparation for in class. But if, you know, obviously you can use it in either, either way. Um, and then <coughs> on these, you have the ability to vote the little, there's these little dots here. If you click the dot, that's voting for it. And there will be more and more dots that come across. You can also comment on it. Okay, so go ahead and, and start voting and, and or commenting as you see fit. Reading each other's. Um, the other piece that this has is, um, the ability to have a chat if you wanted to, an ongoing conversation. So you could um, have the, this could be something that you use in class and you could follow it up with a chat or you could have them chatting about it if they were all on like, if you were in a, um, an online learning environment and you wanted them to have a conversation about certain things that you posted there or that they posted there and they were meeting at a specific time to do that. There could be a chat there and that chat is logged so you could go in and see it. Um, because you, have, you need to make accounts for all of these so that you have access to what you created to be able to go back to it, but your students don't need to have accounts to participate.
when you were playing around with the options. So that's basically my evolution of how to get students connected and talking to my topics or about my topics. Yeah. I would be asking, is there any reason why not all of them have the ability to be voted on? Did you use all your votes up? Oh yeah, you, put, you used all your votes up, yeah. And when you set it up, you can tell it how many votes you'll allow. Up to 10. It's oh, only a photo ID voting. Yeah. <laughs> you can do up to 10 votes. Is a, is, that's the maximum you can set it at, yeah. is 10. I've never gone that high. I usually do like three to five, depending on how big a class I have and what I'm gonna do with it when I come back to class. And, terms of how I'm dividing up my students to, for conversation purposes. So, um, this is the newest one and I have to say that um, at first it did not work very well on um, mobile devices and um, I've had email contact with the guy who built this thing um, and he's super responsive and he's like that's in the works and next thing I knew it was up and running. And he's Canadian. Um, and he's Canadian. <laughs> Go UBC. <laughs> um, and uh, there was also another time when it was just down and not working at all. And I emailed him, and he emailed me back right away. It's like, yeah, I've noticed um, there's a there was somebody who was doing a um, professional development workshop or something, and so his server was being hit really hard. And so he bumped things up so that it could handle that. So that was the first time that there was such a heavy load on it. Um, so he's super responsive. Um, and he's really glad that people are using it. Yeah. Um, have you had as much luck using uh, Padlet or Try Cider on the phone? Um, so P Padlet has been around for quite a long time and they actually have an app. Okay. Um, and their app works great. Okay. Um, Try Cider. I assume works well from a mobile device. I haven't personally tested it out, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. The adding an image in TriCider is new, and I haven't tested that yet. Because um, once I found dot storming, I kind of got sold on this one. <laughs> so I have to say, I probably use this the most, especially if I'm trying to organize students' thoughts into smaller units. Um, and if I don't need to organize their thoughts, I just use Padlet because that's also easy. 